Welcome back everyone, this is Lee, and yes, today's the day we'll be looking at the Sony A7R 4 picture shift file versus the Pentax K1 picture shift file, and yes, a few years ago, I did the Sony A7R 3 versus the Pentax K1 in picture shift, and so hopefully in this video, after a few years since that video, we'll see some improvements over from Sony. So without further ado, let's begin. But right before we begin with this whole side-by-side -side comparison, let's take a quick look at the actual workflow. Now, here is the Pentax K1. This is the pixel shift at play. Once pixel shift is done on the Pentax, essentially the camera itself is combining all four shots into one DNG file. Now, you take that one file and you could toss it to your Lightroom and you do your editing. Now with the Sony, uh, the Sony has not changed their workflow pipeline at all from the A7R 3 when they first introduced picture shift. Now, with that said, basically you take your shots, four shots or 16 shots, once that sequence is completed, you bring it over to the Sony software program. Now, you select all your shots and then you right click and you convert it to a picture shift file, an ARQ file. Now, once that's done, you export that ARQ file and you could use it in Lightroom. So that is the general pipeline between each system. Pentax is essentially a one click button. With the Sony is a, like a three, four step process. You need to take your shots, toss it into Sony software, export it out, and then you take it to Lightroom. Now, quick note, the Sony software, it does not use your full potential of your file. It's a free program, so keep that in mind. Some of the features on the Sony software is very limiting, but you can still edit your photos in Sony software. Now, with all that said, imagine doing an actual project. You're taking a photo of a still life object, right? With all the technical aspects out the way, you're basically focusing on the artistry of taking the shot. Now, with the Sony, you're probably doing your normal, you know, you frame your shot, your you know, composition is great. You're taking all your shots, right? In between, at times, you're taking picture shift shots. So you have some normal shots here, picture shift shots here, normal shots here, then picture shift shots there, right? You take all that sequence, you take it to Sony, software and yes it's going to be a headache because not only you need to select all 16 photos you need to make sure you select all 16 correct photos to convert it to a picture shift file that is a huge hassle at the end of the day and also if you're taking these shots in session and perhaps you hit the wrong button and you took a picture shift shot you need to remove all 16 picture shift shots manually you cannot just remove one file, you need to delete all 16 of them. Now, a lot of you guys might think that that's not a big deal, but each picture shift shot is about two gigs of space. Yes, two gigs of space, so just keep that in mind. This is a really expensive method, so you need to use it sparingly. So with that said, with the Sony workflow pipeline, there's a huge, huge bottleneck when you're doing picture shift on the camera. Not only you need to, you know, kind of be wary about how you're using picture shift, you also need to work your way in converting these files into one ARQ file. Now with the Pantex, it's very straightforward. You take your shot, you do a picture shift shot, you take your shot, you do a picture shift shot. There's no conversion at the end of this. You're basically doing everything in Lightroom straight away. You're working on the files already. Now, I hope in the future, Sony, if you're listening, Sony, I hope in the future you enable an option within the camera to process these images because it was such a hassle to go through all 16 files in your software. So it just, you know, too much bottlenecks, right? Now with that said, I know many people might think that if Sony enabled that option, it might take longer or the Sony camera might overheat. And which is, you know, valid because Sony is notorious of putting more features in their camera and they end up ruining the whole user experience, right? They put 4K in their cameras, the next four models is overheating, and now they put picture shift in their cameras and they're making their end users process more time just to get one file. So that is a downside to using Sony picture shift in terms of workflow. Now, in terms of image quality, let's get right to it. So during my ISO testing side by side, of course, I noticed something. I put each camera in one column I did a side by side, of course. And as you can already see, with the Sony, the higher you jack your ISO, the warmer it got and the more brighter it got. 
it was a really strange phenomenon, but I just want to point that out there. Whereas the Pentax, it stays the same consistently all throughout the ISO range. Now, that is something that I, it's, it's really weird. It's not only a white balance issue, it's also an exposure issue. So that's just something people should know about when they're using their Sony A7R 4 Now, in terms of the actual image quality, let's take a look at this image. Now here are my plants in my study room. And yes, most of you guys have seen this in my previous video. Essentially, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm using a Rokinon 14 millimeter 2.8 aperture lens on both cameras. And here is what it looks like when I downsampled this 240 megapixel A7R 4 picture shift file to match the Pentax K1 picture shift file. Now, already you notice that the Sony is actually a lot cleaner than the Pentax. Yes, the Sony is a lot cleaner than the Pentax. However, let's take a closer look at the leaves. The leaves on the Pentax has more finer details than the Sony. So that's just something for you guys to know. The Pentax slightly more noisier than the Sony, but it has more finer details. Whereas the Sony, it's a lot cleaner than the Pentax pretty much when you downsample these files. Now, what if I upscale the Pentax K1 versus the Sony ASMR 4 What if I stretch it out to 80 inches by 53 inches by 240 DPI? Now, this is what it looks like. Essentially, you can see that by stretching and upscaling the Pentax file to match the Sony file, you are accentuating the noise. You can see the noise much more clearer now, now that we stretch it out. Now, with that said, I thought about this. How can I get a four-year-old camera to compete with a 2019 camera of today? So basically, I went out to get a separate program. Basically, it's a $100 program called Gigapixel by Topaz Lab. Basically, it helps you enlarge your photos giving you a much more easier way to enlarge it without losing details. So the program itself gives me about 80% there. I use Photoshop to give me 20% more. And basically this is what it looks like. Essentially with Topaz Lab, with the help of this AI software, the Sony versus the Pentax looks more or less the same, but I have to give it to the Pentax with the help of Gigapixel, of course, because now it seems like the finer details are helping out the Pentax because now looking at it side by side, I actually rather prefer the Pentax over the Sony file. But keep in mind, you do need that Topaz software to get you 80% there and also Adobe Photoshop to get you 20% the rest of the way. Now as for my favorite part of the test, this is basically my underexposed test. And essentially what I do is I underexpose my shots, I take it to Lightroom, and I push out the exposure just to see which files retains the cleanest information. And so this is what the A7R4 looks like. This is what the Pentax K1 looks like. And as you can see, the Sony A7R4 still has artifacts in their file when you are pushing out the exposure. Now, take a closer look at the projector. As you can tell, the projector is white, but as for Sony, they render it kind of green, whereas the Pentax is really close to real life. So in the end, I feel that the Sony has some color variation issues when you are pushing out the exposure, and that's just something that people should note. And also, when you downsample the Sony file to the Pentax K1 size, most of the artifacts do disappear on the Sony. However, if you do zoom in one to one, you might find pieces of the artifact. And just to wrap things up, the Sony a 4 picture shift file at 240 megapixel. This feature is one of those features that no other camera has as of today on the market. However, this function, in order to get it to work properly, it's kind of uninviting, right? Because number one, you need to download Sony software to get the images all together to create the ARQ file, right? Number two, if you get your exposure wrong, high or low, your color reproduction is going to be off, right? It's going to be terrible. And number three, the file size. Now, the ARQ is two gigs for the pixel shift file. However, depending on the person that you are, some people might still keep the 16 files. Now, with that said, that means it could be even more than three or four gigs all together with the ARQ files plus the 16 files to make the ARQ files. Now as for the Pentax, the Pentax has the better workflow. It's just processed in the camera. You don't need any other software to process the picture shift file. 
but the Sony was able to be more cleaner when it was down sample versus the Pentax. However, the Pentax was able to still have more finer details than the Sony. So with that said, enlarging the files, upscaling to match the 240 megapixel A7R4 file, that was actually pretty interesting that Gigapixel could do that for us. That means that if I ever need a big print to be as big as this 240 megapixel print, I could definitely rely on Topaz Lab and Photoshop to get me there. So I don't need to go out and buy me a brand new camera system to do that. I could just rely on AI software to help me to get me 80% there, 20% with Photoshop. So at the end of the day, I don't think there's any real winners or losers. It's just innovation in the making. Pentax needs to continue you know, building on top of the Pentax K1, whereas the Sony, they need to start implementing a better user experience because if they can do that, they could attract more people using this function. So anyways, thank you guys for checking me back. And I hope you guys learned something in this video. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Take it easy. Peace.